Appreciate you guys. I always say this and I start all my talks the same way, is that you can be in the room and not be in the room. So you can physically be in this room but not be here. And I know that's very possible because you are being overwhelmed and bombarded with a lot of information. So I request that you be where your feet are right now. Is that fair? Right, and so just know that I took the time out and carved the time out because of my long relationship with Marshall, which spans 20 years. And I mentioned this to the world men's team that was in here, that his mom connected us 20 years ago. She was running the dry cleaners in the neighborhood that I, grew up, that I was living in here in Portland. And she talked about us having a mutual love for a ball. And then she introduced us. And Marshall and I have been connected ever since. And in many ways, what has happened is, I served in the same role that someone did for me. So in that book, that little book that you all got, you're gonna read about this person who was my human catalyst who changed my life. And her name is Miss Lane. And Miss Lane was my best friend's mom. And so real quick, brief, Cliff Notes version of my story is both my parents were addicts, they abandoned us, my grandparents raised us as best they could, but there happened to be a playground in the neighborhood and that's where I felt safe for the first time. And so I decided that if this was a safe place, I'm gonna throw myself into sports because I wanted to belong somewhere. And little did I know it was gonna unlock my life in a way that no one could have ever predicted because they basically said, look what they come from, nothing good's gonna come of them. So I got an attitude, I'll show you. I'll show you. And so I fell in love with sports, not for trophies or medals for first place. I love being on a team. It was about belonging for me. It was about connection and community. I love being on a team. But my attitude as an athlete, if you shine, I shine. So I was always generous. How could I actually keep you here longer so you wouldn't go away and I wouldn't have to go home and face the things I was actually navigating that no one really knew? So I never really let people know what I was navigating as a kid. I just basically threw myself into things, was really good at not letting people know. These social workers found out that when you are committed to something, you're focused on something, circumstances don't dictate your destiny. You can find a way. So I fell in love with the ball, then I fell in love with books, got my public library card, where the wild things are, if any of you know that title was the first book I took out of the public library, and I fell in love with school. And then I met Miss Lane, who you'll read about in the book, my best friend's mom. And Miss Lane was the person who wanted nothing but the best for me. We all needed a Miss Lane. I promise you, none of y'all got here on your own, right? Someone maybe lovingly shoved you towards your destiny. Maybe they believed in you before you believed in yourself. Maybe they peeked around the corner like Marshall's mom did about he and I connecting. But I'm here to tell you that that person was this spark for you. Maybe you started believing yourself because they believed in you. And maybe they kept encouraging you. Maybe they challenged you. Maybe they held you accountable. Because we all need someone who holds us accountable. And I think that's the key thing. When Miss Lane said to me, oh, it's all possible for you. Why not? Those two words, why not? That unlocked all my possibilities. So because of a ball, right, and, and books and betterment and a crazy community that raised me. I was raised by drug dealers and users, war veterans and workers other kids' parents, custodians, librarians, food service workers, all these people raised me. I'm a mosaic of all those people standing in front of you right now. So I honor every single one of them. One of the things that you should know is, before actually I started speaking, I do a very specific ritual. So I do a sign of the cross, I tap my hat, I have in my pocket two pictures, that's me and Miss Lane, and that's my grandmother. Those are my two angels. All y'all have rituals before you play, don't you? Do you think about the intention behind your rituals? Do they ground you in your purpose every single time? Because they should. It shouldn't just be throwing on your stuff and putting on your things just because everybody else is doing that same thing. Why are you doing it? Because as soon as you have more intention and you lock into your purpose, I promise you anything is possible. Human potential is boundless and endless. I've seen it all over the world, especially when you have a purpose. So I'm that child who was abandoned, told that nothing good would come of them. A ball, book, and betterment changed my entire life. So because of a ball, book, and betterment, I got a bachelor's degree in speech communication and sports medicine. I got a master's degree in health education. I spent 10 years in the Air Force as a language translator. I speak five languages, Serbian, Croatian, Russian, German, and Czech. I got out of the military, worked at the high school level as an athletic trainer, the college level as an athletic trainer, 
And then I landed what they said was my dream job. I became a very, very special advisor here at Nike. And so I'm gonna take you back. I was Kobe Bryant's athletic trainer all through high school I'm from Philly. I was on the bench when Allen Iverson crossed Michael Jordan. I was on the bench that night. I was the third black trainer in the history of the NBA for my hometown team, the Sixers. People told me nothing good would come of me. When I met Bean, he was 13 years old. I babysat him, actually. They had just come back from Italy. And I knew his dad. I got him his first strength coach. I took care of his injuries all through high school. Bean and I met, let's see, 2018, I got to interview him. And he talked about our relationship that dated all the way back to him being a teenager. And the one thing he pointed out is that that guy never wanted anything but the best for me. So as your coach has been talking about honoring other people who have actually helped you along the way and cleared a path for you, when you step on the court any time, make sure that you honor that. But one of the things that I realized from Kobe, right, and from Bean, we all called him Bean in Philly, just so you know, we never called him Kobe. I do that on behalf of y'all, because many of y'all might not know the Bean thing, is that he never wasted a practice. There's lots of videos about him talking about practice, but there's one really important video when he didn't score a point his first summer league back in Philly. That set in motion everything. He didn't score a point that whole summer. And that's when he came to the gym over at St. Joe's University and said, that's never happening again, help me. And so we built from there. I got him his first strength coach, all these other things, and I watched him make a decision. So you all have an opportunity to make a decision, don't you? You do. You have a decision. And you have this wonderful opportunity to showcase that decision. If you're really about it, don't talk about it. Be about it. There's lots of talking for very few doers. Which one are you? Lots of talking. Very few doers. Which one are you? And you get to showcase and demonstrate that. And so I got to work at Nike for seven years. They actually created the position for me when I left the Sixers. And I worked in product design. I was a special advisor. The top designer there at Tinker Hatfield was my boss. I learned creative design thinking from him. And then Miss Lane kept saying I should write a book. And I kept saying, why, who's gonna care? She said, well, there's another you out there that needs to know it's possible. And I said, bet, I'm gonna write a book for that person. So I designed my book, it got rejected. That book that's in your lap there, got rejected by every publisher. They said it was over-designed and too creative. I self-published it, it took off. I love that you're, you smiled about that. Yes, yes, they literally told me, don't even try to do it. And I published it on my own, and it took off, and ESPN and Disney signed me to a book deal. Still at Nike. Let me take you back to that six-year-old boy who was abandoned. I understood what my purpose was because someone actually pointed it out to me. Oh, Kevin, you've got something really unique about you. So the more that I started to understand, I needed to share my story for another me. Because I know there's always another one out there that needs to be encouraged, just like I was. And so that little book has been in print since 2005. I think over 750,000 are in print now, right? And I could have listened to those people and not done it the way that I did, but I wanted it to do it that way, and it's won 23 design awards. So I tell all this to you all to say that people are always gonna tell you it's not possible. But if you surround yourself with the right kind of people who challenge you and hold you accountable, anything is possible. Human potential is boundless and endless. I've seen people do a lot with very little. You've got this amazing group of people supporting you behind you. And you've got people from home and all those places that will be watching, believing in you. So when you go on the court, think about that, that you're a mosaic of all of those people. And play with purpose and intention and passion. But play for each other. Does that make sense? So this is a little book. I always have fun. Like I designed this for y'all real quick. And so it's got some simple truths in it. I literally could tell my whole life story with this book. Do you have a book? You have one, right? I just want to make sure. No, you don't have to look at it. I just want to make sure that you didn't get it, right? So I can literally tell you my whole life story with these images. I'm not going to go through that real quickly, but I do want to point out the eye. The eye is about curiosity. You need to be curious. And then on the last page is this wonderful quote. I have no special talents. I'm only passionately curious. You should be desperately in love with the things that interest you. Did you hear me? You should be desperately in love with the things that interest you. 
and be curious about it and try to learn as much about it and squeeze everything out of those things. I'm so desperately in love with human performance and potential, I'm back in school getting my second graduate degree. So, oh, by the way, I kind of buried the lead. I'm 65 years young. So I'm just telling y'all, right, that you never have to stop learning yet. But we got some lotion for y'all in the back to keep y'all youthful look too. So it's called my Forever Young Lotion line. Yes. Marshall ain't suave than all that much though. Okay. Yes, it's all good. Yes. So I'm getting my second graduate degree in sports psychology. I'm a forever curious person. I do believe that we never have to stop learning, and I also believe this, we're the greatest app ever created. All those apps on your phone and your computer that tell you to update yourself, right? Update, update, update. Why aren't you updating yourself? Why aren't you staying in beta like an app? Always updating, always improving, squashing bugs, making fixes on yourself. That's curiosity. Y'all all heard the term growth mindset, right? Did you know that the root of a growth mindset is curiosity? That is scientifically researched. The more curious people will always have a growth mindset. So be curious about the game, be curious about the people that you're meeting, be curious about your journey. Be curious about the journey of other people because you have no idea the people in this room who might be the next industry leaders and amazing human beings and you could be sitting right next to them. You need to build. We are anxiously awaiting your arrival. We know you're gonna be amazing leaders in whatever it is that you endeavor to do. We know that. That's why you're here. You're already demonstrating it. So lean into your journey. Does that all make sense? Mm -hmm. So you may encounter many defeats, but you must not be defeated. That's a simple truth, right? You gotta fail forward. There's gonna be things that'll be difficult and challenging, but you find a way to fail forward and learn from those things. I love these little simple quotes. You cannot be committed to your dream in your comfort zone. Whenever you find yourself doubting how far you can go, just remember how far you've come. The devil whispers, you can't withstand the storm. I love this reply. The word replied, I am the storm. And keep going. And so one of the things that I truly believe is, that is really important for young people to understand the more present you are, is what we started our conversation with, right? Being present in the room, being where your feet are, that's where it's gonna elevate your curiosity and it'll allow you to unlock all your possibilities. And I know there's been a lot of people talking at y'all and sharing with you. And I just hope that in this brief conversation that you took at least one thing away from this that you can hold on to as you go forth in your journey. But if anything, I hope that you realize that human potential is boundless and endless. And the circumstances never dictate somebody's destiny. And a lot of you have probably amazing stories that demonstrate the same thing that I just unpacked for you in my story. And look what's available for you. Surround yourself with people who believe in you but also hold you accountable. Don't waste these precious days. When you see the light of day, I'm gonna give you this activation. It's super simple. Have one breath of gratitude before you get out of bed because you got another day. Then before you leave, get out of the bed, set an intention for the day. I'm gonna be curious, I'm gonna be connected, I'm gonna be passionate, I'm gonna be energetic, whatever it might be, in another breath. Then swing your feet out of that bed and plant them firmly in that intention for the day. When you finish your day and you get ready to climb back in bed, just pause at the edge of the bed and grade yourself on that intention. Go or no go, did I do it? and hope for another day and make that intention again. That's a simple mindset activation that you can do every single day. Imagine if you start stacking that, you're gonna be a problem. All caps, bold, italics. That's the kind of problem you wanna be. Are we good? I wish you all nothing but the best. I'm anxiously awaiting the game on Saturday, tomorrow, right? But I'm also anxiously awaiting your arrival. And the people that are supporting you, I think that actually this doesn't happen enough. Can I do this really quickly? Yeah. If you would stand up, just you all, and turn to look at them and give them a little bit of gratitude right now, the people that are supporting you right now, and just put your hands together and just thank them. <laughs> so there's a lot of people that are spending time and giving up their time, and I just thank all of you for your time and attention, and I wish you nothing but the best. Are we good?
Yes, sir. Appreciate okay. it. Be well, Godspeed. Thank you. Thank you.